There we go. Okay, cool. So uh, my name is Mark James. I should point out at the moment as well, I don't have like a really cool Art Deco background. It is bare plaster because we're just decorating the dining room. We're getting a new kitchen and everything. So I don't really think I'm really trendy with this really cool um, like Art Deco stuff. So my name is Mark James and um, the business is Jones & Young. For myself, I used to work in hotels um, for many years. Um, before I got into mortgage advice. And um, I just found that, I suppose with mortgages, when we were going through it, it was very much a sales culture. Um, so when we did first start setting up on our own, we didn't want to create a sales culture. We wanted to be an advice-led company. Uh, so where we, myself and my business partner, Richard, have worked in the big brokers, it's all about your numbers there, obviously, and making bottom line. And in some cases, not gonna lie, stitching people up. Um, because it's not always the best advice um, to tell someone to get a, mor a mortgage. Um, but obviously in those types of environments, you're told to sort of sell whatever you can. So we, when we set up our company and we um, all went self-employed, uh, we wanted to make a culture that was more about the advice led rather than it being sort of sales. So we do get customers that will call us asking for a mortgage and we do say to them, it's just not the best thing to do. Um, sometimes, you know, you are better off just staying where you are and speaking to your current lender. Um, and obviously, um, other times there's, there's things that we can do to help. Uh, so, um, for myself, I've been a mortgage advisor for about, uh, I think it's about 12 years now. Um, during that time, I've helped a lot of people um, to get on the ladder. But what I do really enjoy is helping self-employed people, simply because I just feel that the self-employed market is neglected in a way for us. Um, and the way we're all paid very different. Um, and there's a lot of opinions about sort of how we can calculate our income and stuff like that. And um, it just became a really interesting area uh, to focus on. So uh, this is Richard and his family. And this is my family on the right. Uh, as you can see, he's a bit older than me and not as good looking and stuff. But, uh, but he pulls it off in his own way. So uh, fair enough. And uh, that's our children, which is supposed to be our why, but that's generally why we have an office so we can stay away from them. And, um, and our wives as well, probably. We do, I, in fact, if anyone ever wants to come past our office, it's become very much a counseling clinic um, for married men. So if anyone <laughs> does want to come on by, uh, you're more than welcome to come in and have a moan. We keep it all secret, so that's fine. Uh, so for mortgages in general, uh, sorry, Penny, you did want me going into the presentation now, I'm guessing. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Just as I sort of go off on one. Uh, so generally um, for self-employed mortgages, it is exactly the same as employed people. Um, for mortgages, it's just that we're a lot more scared and there isn't as much knowledge in the industry for us. Uh, so when I was working at a big broker and quite often we get a call in, oh, I'm self-employed, that sort of thing, oh, do I need to bother with this hassle? Because I could just wait another 10 minutes and I'll get a nice employed person that I only need three pay slips from them and it's all a lot easier and stuff like that. So I do understand when people are ringing mortgage brokers that when you're self-employed, it is a lot more... Um, it's a lot more difficult for them to calculate your income um, and then add to the fact that they don't deal with self-employed people very often. It then makes it a bit more difficult to get the actual right answer. But generally, it is exactly the same as employed people. So it's affordability based. Maximum lending is capped by income multiples, four and a half, 4.75, five. Very difficult to get five and a half, six these days, um, but there are a couple of lenders that will do it. You can get fixed rates and trackers. You can still get offset mortgages, um, capital and repayment, interest only or part and part. Max term is about 40 years um, for... Um, uh, but you would be capped at your retirement age. Most lenders take retirement age at 70 or 75. Um, so you would get your maximum term that way. Um, and then assess your ability to pay and likelihood of repaying is obviously your credit report. So the way lenders calculate self-employed income is um, very dependent on the lender. So majority of lenders will use an average of the last two years salary and dividends. Um, so on your SA 302s, you'll see, um, in fact, it's a good tax calculation now, they'd like to change the name every now and again. Um, so you would look at your salary and your dividends if you're a limited company, um, and that would um, 
determine what your income was. They would then take the last two years, average them, and then apply their income multiple. If you're a sole trader, um, it would then just be the last um, two years average of the last two years net profit. If your latest year was lower than your previous year, then the lenders just take the lowest figure. Um, so you don't get to do an average. So you had a really good year last year, and then this year wasn't so great. They would take the lowest um, this year. Um, so you can't sort of fiddle it that way. Uh, there are some lenders that allow you to use a, um, your accounts for 18 months. So that's because of the way that your tax is paid. Um, so you could effectively still use your um, last year's SA302, so 2021. You could effectively use that till October. So if you were having a bad year, that's one of the tricks that you can do. Um, so just tell your accountant not to do it in this scenario. Tell them not to do the 2022 books. Um, and you would just carry on using 21 accounts. Um, and that's a really good thing. If you know you've had a bit of a bad year and they're going to be less, um, then that's a, that's a good way to, um, to get around that problem. Uh, some lenders do take the latest year's um, figures and um, it can be beneficial to do that. Again, if you've had a really good year, um, it's good. Uh, but lenders do still like minimum of two years trading. So there are lenders that will take only one year's account and you've only got to be running your business for one year. But majority of lenders will still want a two year trading history, um, but would take. Uh, but there are then some lenders that would take the latest years. When I'm doing these types of presentations, it really makes me laugh and sort of, I think as in a finance industry, we're very good at giving you the information we want you to have, but then hiding the rest. So in this scenario, Coventry Building Society are generally really good um, because they would use latest year's accounts. Uh, also, they use net profit. And um, so I'll explain a bit later on what the benefit of that is. Um, but yeah, Coventry are a really good lender in this scenario. Um, certainly if you need to choose your latest years. Um, so some um, lenders allow you to use net profits and remuneration. So that's salary and net profit. This is really an advantage for anyone, first of all, for limited companies, but anyone that needs to be more tax efficient. So when, we, um, when we're looking at clients, there's two types of sort of self-employed clients. There's clients like myself that just need all the income and just take it all out, um, salary and dividends out of their company. And then you do get some um, really tax efficient and really successful companies that go, do you know what? I could have taken 100 grand out this year, but I only need 50 to live. So um, there's no point paying tax on the rest of it. In those scenarios where they're using retained profits, most lenders would take you just a salary and dividends, um, which would mean that you wouldn't be able to borrow using your 400,000 income. You would only be able to use 50,000 because that's all that you've paid tax on. What Coventry, for example, do, they allow us to use net profits. Um, so that means that we could actually use the 100,000 income. And um, although you've not paid tax on that because you didn't need it, you've just retained it in your company, but because of the way Coventry use net profits, um, plus salary, that would mean that we'd effectively pretty much get the full income of 100,000. Um, so that's probably one of the most frustrating, probably one of the biggest calls we get actually, is where people will tell us, um, oh, I've been told I can't get this mortgage, but I earn 100 grand. They're telling me I only earn 50. And that would be the general scenario because the mortgage advisors only ask them for their SA302s. So um, to look at their salary and dividends and not look at the company accounts to have a look to see what the net profit is. Um, so if someone is telling you that and you do feel you're earning a lot more, then that's generally the problem. Um, and then a lender like Coventry is perfect in that scenario because they apply the income multiple on the net profit. Um, as Mary will tell you as well, it's a really good way to be tax efficient in your company. Certainly if you don't need to take out all the, company, uh, all the money um, as salary or dividends, um, then that's a really good way to hold money in your company um, but be able to live the lifestyle that you want to, uh, you know, because you're, you're effectively earning 100 grand. Um, it's possible um, to add back in. I have absolutely no idea what that is. Um, possible to add back in. I've got no clue. Um, I saw it coming on my list and I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. But I can't even think of anything to blag it. There's absolutely no possibility of mortgages to add back in. Uh, apart from if you were using an offset or something, uh, an offset account, you could balance your savings off. Um, but it's uh, quite technical. So let's leave that today. Um, oh. 
Um, pension payment, uh, you can use uh, pension income to get a mortgage, and um, that's fine. Most lenders allow it. Um, they just treat it as normal income. Um, for self-employed people, we do find a lot of people that have started their business later, so they might have a corporate pension, and then they want to use their net profits or salary and dividends, then we just mix the two together. Some lenders uh, will give you, say, 50% for a second income, um, but there are lenders that will give you 100%. Um, car payments, um, Again, I have absolutely no idea why car payments are in there for mortgages, but I will ask my business partner that wrote this presentation one day. Um, one year's trading, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, I think the problem with one year's trading is you can use lenders for this. Um, Pepper Money, Vida um, are the two that jump into my mind, but their rates are extremely high. So you will pay for it. As you generally find with mortgages and finance in general, if you're going outside the box, you'll generally find the rates a lot higher and you'll start getting a kick in for it. Um, certainly adverse credit and stuff like that. So you do need to be careful when you're using them. Um, CIS scheme is a brilliant scheme to be used and I'll explain a bit more about that um, on the next slide. Um, and then contractors will go into a bit more detail as well because there's some brilliant stuff you can do there um, to um, inflate your income. Um, which is good if you want to buy a bigger house and get a bigger mortgage. So CIS contractors, um, and the great thing about using CIS contractors, the construction industry scheme is we can use their gross pay. So basically we can treat them exactly like they're employed. Um, so if you think that an employee um, gets their gross pay, so that's before any petrol's deducted, before their work equipment, all of that is deducted. Um, as self-employed people, we don't really get that luxury, uh, but the CIS contractors can. Uh, so they get given a CIS statement from, um, the main, from the main contractor, and it's a bit like a pay slip, uh, has a UTR number, CIS numbers, stuff like that on there. And as long as they are deducted 20% tax at source, um, then they can um, use that statement like a pay slip. Halifax, for example, only asks for three months CIS statements. And what they'll then do is they'll add the three months gross pays together, divide it by three, uh, and then uh, times it by 12, divide by 52, and then times by 46, because they only give you 50, uh, sorry, 46 weeks income. They don't give you a full 52 for a full year, but where you're using the gross pay, it's generally a really good scheme. Um, also with CIS um, contractors, they normally all want their rebate. So what the accountant does is when they do their personal tax, they'll start cutting out all their expenses and stuff like that um, to get their um, taxable pay as low as possible so they can be uber tax efficient. Uh, their taxable income could be 12 grand, uh, but we, if they had a gross pay of say 50 for the year, we could effectively use um, nearly all of that 50. So it's a really good scheme um, for anyone using that. Um, and we can use their gross day rates, uh, stuff like that. Um, so it's really good. So if you know anyone that's paid by CIS, um, then please get in contact because we do enjoy doing those. Uh, net profits from limited company or salary and dividends. Uh, like I said, when you're a limited company, there's two ways um, the lender can ask for your income. One is salary and dividends, which is on your tax calculation, USA 302. And it literally is just your salary. Most people take between eight and 12 grand. Um, and then others, uh, the rest will be taking dividends. Uh, then the other way is the net profit, as I explained earlier, with a lender like Coventry, um, that would just take the net profit out of there. So if you are being more tax efficient, it is really good. Um, they won't limit you on what you can use the funds for. Um, so you could still do home improvements, purchase by to let, consumer goods. Um, it doesn't matter um, what you can do, but it is really beneficial when you're not drawing down all your dividends. Um, because you don't need it. There's no point taking income out of your company if you don't need it to live on. And um, so that's where it does become really interesting. And then that is it. Um, in fact, I will go back slightly because I did uh, talk about contractors, which I thought there was another slide, but there isn't. Um, so with, um, with contractors, a bit like CIS contractors, if you're paid a day rate, so if you're a project manager, and um, we see a lot of surveyors and um, people like that that are paid a day rate, they sometimes got a contract. Uh, the lender allows us to use the day rate in the contract rather than, again, their taxable income. So obviously for most accountants, the plan is to get you to pay as little tax as possible. But when you come to get your mortgage, the plan is to get as much income as possible. So naturally, there's there's quite a um, sort of a gap there for what we need to do. When we're using things like CIS statements, 
net profits um, and contractors using their contract, then we completely forget about the taxable income. So your accountant can go and work their magic and then we can do our magic to get you still the mortgage that you want. Um, so for example, if we had a surveyor that's paid 500 quid a day um, in their contract, they work um, 52 weeks of the year. Most lenders will only take that at 46 to 48 weeks, but we take the 500 pounds times five times 46, 48 to give you the gross income. If that same surveyor was using their limited company, the accountant's naturally going to cut that company down as low as they can. Um, so the income would be significantly less. Uh, what we then do, um, the lenders want to see a contract. You generally need a couple of years contracting experience, but they don't ask for a CV or anything. Um, sometimes they'll ask for proof of contracts, um, but normally they'll, they'll just want to see that you've got three months left on your current contract uh, and you've been in the same industry for a couple of years and have got some um, experience in contracting. And then that's it. Thank you all very much. If there's any questions, please let me know. Blimey, that was a... Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I talk fast. I go through fast. I don't do my homework, as you can see, with my slides um, and everything. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You, you, you do do your homework. There was only one thing that... Was a, see, that's why I was a bit worried about you recording it. That's why I won't be going out on socials. I'll probably... <laughs> I'll probably